I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to make a completely different episode this morning. In fact, we're not going to have the bump, we're not going to have the music, we're not going to do a lot of things, because we've got to talk about some changes that need to happen around here. Yeah, it's I've been doing this for a long time. Four years, basically every day, and after a while, eventually you'll learn that maybe we're posting at the wrong time. Yeah. It's true. It seems like, based on my research, I've been posting, well, I know, I don't need to research it, that I've been posting every morning at 7 a.m. We've been really religious about this. We've basically never missed one for years, and I know some of you really appreciate waking up in the morning and having your coffee and knowing that a new show has just dropped and you can watch the show as you have your breakfast. I try to get out a little bit before you start your day, and it seems like, for most people, this is pretty good. If you're in Eastern time, you get it about 8 o'clock. Of course, Daylight Savings throws some of this off, and I've come to realize that not very many people are actually doing this, and it's not super practical. When we've done some additional episodes and dropped them later in the day, we're getting better results. And for a lot of reasons, my workflow is a little bit difficult trying to get things out for so early in the morning, especially as I often work until about 2.30 at night. Sometimes there isn't even enough time to get things out, and of course, Valentina doesn't start work until after the episode has dropped, so getting thumbnails out can be... It, there's just a lot of challenges, logistically, and it doesn't seem like it's actually optimized for much of anyone. Even my father, who I kind of did it for, tends to watch the show a little bit later in the day. So we're doing something a little bit different today. The episode I had originally scheduled for now, if you're watching this in real time, that would be 7 o'clock in the morning, is I'm already done. It's got a thumbnail. Like, we're on top of it. We had an episode ready, and I think you'll enjoy it. It's got some good information and some things we've not really gone into to before, so I think it's going to be good. But dropping it at 7 o'clock this morning would have kept us on track, and how would we ever make a change because we don't want to miss something? So I'm making this show uh, this morning to talk about this and just some updates to the channel, and we're going to talk a little bit about YouTube comments because that's kind of important, uh, just because a lot of people are confused as to how it works. And then the show is going to come out this afternoon. My plan is to trial this at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon Central Time. I've checked with YouTube. Not like I called them up, but they give me these tools, and it says that posting in the mid to late afternoon when people are starting to head home from work is, seems to be when my audience is ready, you guys, and that we would get a better response. Or more importantly, the algorithm will reward us more for bringing the show out at a time when people are ready for it. It's a little bit weird how that works, but... We think this will work, and I, I've tried using a few tools. I've been doing this for years, right? And I'm just flying blind, and I'm not really trying to, like, do a big thing. It seems like this really minor change, and definitely get down in those comments and let me know. Is this, like, somehow a problem? Because remember, we're adding an extra episode, so it's not like your 7 a.m. is being pushed off until 4 p.m. It is more like your, four, your 7 a.m. is being brought out early at 4 p.m., the, the afternoon before. So for those of you who really do like having a new show in the morning, just resist watching the daily that comes out. And it's in a category called daily. You can look up whether it's a daily or it's an extra episode uh, and just save that for your morning coffee or whatever. And then you, you'll be able to see all the comments that have already happened and jump in. It'll be a little bit different. Um, and I'm sure someone's going to be like, oh, that's not as good. But I hope the, the bulk of the audience is going to be like, this is kind of nicer. And hopefully it gets us at least a little bit different additional uh, interest because uh, YouTube hopefully will see that we're, you know, playing by their rules uh, and upping the game a little bit. We're just trying to tweak those things. I've been using some tools like vidIQ just to get an idea of what you guys are looking for, and it does actually make some, some sense when I'm looking at it that it seems like it's giving me information uh, that I can actually use and I can action, and hopefully, I mean, it's not going to be huge improvements uh, for, for my audience, but hopefully it's tweaking things so that uh, it's a little bit better for you, and the more audience we attract, the more powerful the show becomes and the better it is for all of us because we're just able to do more things. So, so that's a change that we're making. So you're not losing an episode. You're not being delayed. You're getting an extra episode, sort of, uh, about half an extra episode is sort of how it works out. Um, and you'll get the full-blown daily that we already made for today that's already uploaded and totally ready to go at about 4 o'clock this afternoon, central time. That means 5 p.m. for you Eastern people, uh, 4 p.m. for the uh, the Houston, Dallas, Chicago people. Mountain time, we'll be getting at 3, and Pacific at 2. Now, that's the U.S. If you're in other parts of the world, you can figure that out. But we do all of our posting on Central American time here, which lines up with Dallas. Uh, so it, we're, we're shooting for 4 o'clock. That is the plan. That is why this is a little bit different. Uh, so stick with us. Be ready for that. And if you don't know... 
jumping on like right as the the show drops um as soon as it becomes available that's the best time to watch that uh tell it's just like with netflix netflix doesn't care if you watch a show after two weeks they care if you watch it on opening day maybe the next day right with youtube they care if you watch in the first 30 minutes first hour the the sooner people watch, the more it promotes it, the more that people like it. That does a little bit, but the biggest thing is if you watch the show right away, and then it, when it's done, if you watch another, you don't even have to sit there and pay attention. Just when it comes to the end, just click on another one of my shows, and that tells YouTube that you like the show so much that you're willing to watch another one, and that's like the biggest vote of confidence uh, that YouTube gets from that. So that little bit, just if you're leaving one on and you know, have it on in the background kind of stuff. Go on to another one of my episodes. Uh, sometimes rewatch something or go to Nicaragua 360 and just have it on in the background as music. That stuff may sound silly, but it does a lot to promote the show. And that's, that's what YouTube uses more than anything else to say, ah, this is a show that people want to watch. Again, it's a show that people want to share with others. It really gets the ball rolling. Of course, the likes, posting at places, all those things help a lot. But the biggest thing is watching it quickly, every bit of engagement and watching more episodes, those are the biggest things. If this drives you to watch more, then they're like, ah, not only did they watch it, they're going to watch more, you got to watch it. So that's just for your information. And by the way, I want to say thank you to everyone. I've said this a few times recently, but we've had a big uptick in people buying me a coffee. And that's the, it's like Patreon. You just go to buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It'll be on the screen and stuff. Uh, that you know, is your way of supporting the channel and uh, beyond watching the watching stuff, right? Really does work. And, uh, that, you know, it really does mean a lot. Um, but that's, thank you to everyone who's been doing that. That is, uh, growing and, uh, it's not leaps and bounds, but it's noticeable that that is picking up. But I've also noticed in the last maybe three months, and I know this is the only place that anyone's being told about this, not that you can't find it on Amazon. Of course you can, but, the only organic drive that I know of for anyone finding out about the book that I wrote is from the comments on this channel. And my number of book sales has gone from basically nothing to a really steady amount. It's hardly huge, it's very small, but I know it's coming from the people watching this, uh, from this community watching this show. It's the only place that people are finding out about it that you can link to it. Um, I mean, somewhere, someone must be talking about it, but there's no obvious source of the traffic for people going and finding my book to, to cause the change except for the show. So to whoever you are who's been buying my book in digital format on Amazon, direct from the publisher, whatever, uh, wow, thank you so much that this is a constant stream of people buying the book. That's amazing. And in every different form, it's not like just one thing every so often. It's it's a growing amount. And for those who have no idea, first of all, it's down in the description of every episode so you can find it easily. It's on Amazon. It's my name on Amazon. So you just put in my name. It's, it's the book I wrote. It's uh, Linux Administration Best Practices uh, from Pact Publishing. So it's a real book. You can get it in print if you want. It's a, But it's a serious technology and business management book. We really dig into how to run Linux in businesses. So it's not the kind of thing that applies to this audience. Hence why I don't other, you know, other than things like this, I don't really mention it, but apparently people are finding it and buying it. And thank you a lot. That really, really touches me. So thank you. That's, that's really cool. All right. So I did have this question and this comes up from time to time and it's been coming up for years uh, here. And um, I think it's worth touching on because people really don't know. And until you've been a YouTuber and been a YouTuber who has enough audience with controversial topics, do you start running into some of these problems typically? And what that is, is a lot of you guys will come on and comment on YouTube, obviously, which is fantastic, thank you. Um, and when you do, some of you are like, my comments don't come through. I, can you release my comments? Someone asked me, um, can you can you approve my comments or whatever so that they, they show up? All my stuff's getting blocked. Well, so there's three, cat there's th you know, four categories of comments, basically. One is the comments that are just allowed. You comment, they show up. This is what most of you do, and it just works. So that's how you think comments are supposed to work. And they are, right? That's right. So that's what you're used to. But uh, then there's three other categories or broad categories as I see them. Um, one is that you've posted something that is, uh, it breaks some rule to the point where YouTube is going to block that completely. They are never going to let it through and they're never going to tell me about it, right? So I have no idea that you've made this comment. Um, I cannot release it. I cannot do anything. I can't write to YouTube and say, please let us see this. It's not like that, right? Um, when you do that, and it, and this can be simple, right? It's, uh, it, 
when I say this, it sounds like maybe you're making a death threat or you're, you're swearing or you've said something really disgusting or, you know, whatever. And while those things would also probably trigger that, most people get triggered by this because they try to include links or email addresses or other kinds of things like email addresses, like contact me through this thing, please it right. Most of the time, that is what I found when I have contact with people and are able to dig into why didn't their comments get to me. It's normally because they're posting things that in theory you should know you can't put into a YouTube uh, comment, but people just assume they can. And when it doesn't work, they just keep doing it and it doesn't show up. And then it feels like I'm doing something and I'm not. This is YouTube rules. I have nothing to do with it. It is to protect everyone, including you. You don't want to be posting your, con your, your contact information in that way. But the first time I ever ran into this was someone who got really angry with me and is like, oh, you're deleting my stuff. And it's like, um, I'm really not. I have no idea that you're commenting. And it took several back and forths because they started emailing me and getting really aggressive and uh, like actually quite aggressive. And uh, I'm like, oh, so you're intentional because he was a bigger YouTuber than me, much bigger. And I'm like, so you know that by putting an email into the thing that it wouldn't go through. So you were baiting the system. Like he was putting this in so that he could make the claim that he was emailing me or that he was posting and then go public with, and Scott's deleting it. He doesn't get my message. You can't see my messages, right? But he knew he was putting in a trigger to make sure YouTube wouldn't show it and that I wouldn't be aware of it and that I couldn't release it uh, so that he could then make that other claim, right? So it was, it was a very aggressive situation, but that's often, that one is someone intentionally causing them not to show up. In most cases, people are just like, hey, can you email me? Let's talk about my trip to Nicaragua next week, right? And they put it in there and it never shows up and they get really frustrated. And I can't help you because it's not a thing that they alert me about. It is just breaking rules and they and they don't tell you those are rules, right? They're secret rules, but it's, it's breaching a secret rule and they just, that's it. So if you're having problems posting and, it, and it's like you do it and you try something else and just nothing goes through, I don't have a, a delay. Now, maybe in the future I will. So if you're watching this in a year from now and you're like, ah, oh, but I have this thing, I don't think it's working that way, maybe it's changed. But at this time, there is no delay. When you post, if YouTube thinks it's okay, it shows up, okay? So it's instant. So if it passes the YouTube filters, it will show up. So we have the category of it just goes through and it just gets deleted. That's it, like the, the nuclear option. Then there's another option, and this is the one that doesn't happen very often, and when it does, it seems insanely random. So in this one, YouTube has no idea if the content is bad or not, but it hasn't clearly broken a rule, but they're worried about it. This, I really don't get very often, but I mean like once a week. So I mean, consider that often or not based on your own opinion. And with this, sometimes it's people being really aggressive and mean. Sometimes it's saying things that maybe they shouldn't. Um, it can be uh, things that are just like uh, conspiracy theories or things that are believed to be fake news, but it needs me to look at them. And sometimes, like today, is someone saying, ooh, that's pretty, talking about wedding decorations that were in a video. Um, like I get some really random ones that I can't even begin to guess why it got put into this quarantine. But the way it works for this is that YouTube flags it and they send it to me in a list of things that they're not willing to post until I review it. But I, they haven't strictly broken rules. So as long as I'm okay with it, then YouTube's okay with it. So this is, it's not a big category, but um, it does happen. And I try to go through those every day throughout the day. Once in a while, I will get behind on them. But in general, I'm on top of it. I go through often many times throughout the day. Uh, and basically, anytime I'm checking email, I try to look and see because often it is something completely good that's being posted. I would say two thirds of the time, uh, it's not even something that I would be like, you know, sometimes obviously there's ones I'm like, oh, I wish they wouldn't post that, but we let it through. But there's a lot of times it's like, but this is a really nice post. Someone just posted about where to find a coffee tour. Right, and it wasn't their coffee tour, they were just posting information about it. Someone else said a wedding was nice. These things were put in quarantine, I have no idea why. Maybe it's things that those people had posted other places and it came up with a pattern and was like, maybe you should check this, like, may I get it, right? But, so that kind of stuff does happen. So if you see a delay where you, you post and uh, that'll never show up in like a minute. It, like if it takes like a minute or two, I think that's just the time that it takes for, for YouTube to like show it to people. So things are not instant as much as it feels like it should be. Um, if it's a huge delay and it never shows up, that generally means that it was just nuked by YouTube. And if there's a delay of like, 
uh, 30 minutes to maybe a day, that definitely implies that they put it into quarantine, I found it, and I went and released it when I had a chance. So that's that's generally what you're seeing there. But don't worry about that. That doesn't like flag you in any way. It, it, it does not imply that you've actually said something bad. So and I don't want to imply that because like, seriously, I get a ton of just really nice comments in there all the time. And I can't figure out why uh, why YouTube thought I needed to, to look at it. But I appreciate the YouTubes being cautious in that case. Then there's the category where I do delete them. This is the exception, not the rule. And I'm very clear about what we delete most of the time. There have been only two or three exceptions to this. In almost all cases, it is either because uh, I have stated there's some rules that you cannot post anything that would be illegal or bait someone for something that would be illegal. As an expat in this country that I live in, I and many of the audience are not allowed to discuss local politics. Uh, we can talk about like how they work. We can discuss like, you know, some mechanisms, like all that stuff, like technical stuff, that's fine, right? It's voicing opinion or making false claims. Uh, you know, true claims are probably fine because that's just technical, but false claims are an opinion or just a lie, and that's when you're getting, you're definitely political at that point. Uh, so so it's, it's a little bit um, of a gray area, but it's very clear that as expats, just in general, has nothing to do with where we are, it is not ethical for us to voice a political opinion. Here, it is not legal for us to voice a political opinion. And so a lot of people will post either accidentally, but not very often, or intentionally to say something that really requires uh, some explanation or uh, being disputed or being called out for being false or being called out for being political or whatever, and we can't, right? So that, because they know we can't, they're doing it in most cases because they're trying to post a statement that cannot be disputed because they're willing to take the risk of getting caught presumably because they're either not in the country or they are locals who are allowed to have political opinions, uh, but then they can get it out and act like we're not going to say anything about it. Um, and someone just posted, they posted obvious fake news, right? Made up stuff. And then they'll say things like, I know you're going to delete this. Well, of course we are, because I told you ahead of time, I would delete it if you, if you put in fake information, if you lie to people, if you're posting fake news or if you're, you're uh, political baiting, yeah, that's, it's not appropriate to put that here. You're not allowed to put it here. Don't do it. The other case that I've done, and it's, it's related, is if I catch people obviously lying. We had a group of people, a group of accounts, it's all one person, we all know, uh, who made a bunch of false claims. If you watch their, their post over a period of time, they kept putting conflicting information. I live here. Oh, no, because I live here, I do this. No, because I do this other thing. They kept, it was very clear that they were arguing and lying about everything they put. But based on some of their lies, they were posting things that were illegal. So that meant that they were they were crossing a, I mean, a literal legal barrier where, you know, if you're just lying a little bit like, oh, I live in Leon and the best restaurant's this. And then later you're like, no, I live in Granada and the best restaurant's this. And you're just using a little, I mean, it's not a white lie. It's a pretty serious lie. But it, you're just using a lie to give yourself credence as to your opinion on which, what's the best restaurant in a town so that people are like, oh, listen to him. He lives in Granada. He knows, right? That's that's not cool, but we'll just call you out on that. We're like, no, no, no. You said you lived in Leon. Like, look, we know. Like, do you even live in the country? Have you ever even been here? Right? It, we'll, we'll make sure to tear you apart, but that stuff we can do. We can we can respond. And other people can be like, yeah, he did lie about that. We can we can show. Like, I will call you out. And and you can call me out. Like, that's fine. But, um, but what they did was they kept saying that they had these credentials. I live in this place. And, and then they would provide fake information that is illegal if they lived in that place to, to post. And it's illegal for us to dispute. And one of the things, and this is a, a really important one that I want to just state because I don't think people really think about how well engineered this statement is. People say, oh, you're not allowed. This is to expats, not to locals. You're not allowed to be critical of the government. That statement is true. We're not allowed to be critical of the government. That is absolutely true. And say it, saying it in that way sounds bad. Oh, you're not allowed to be critical of the government? Oh, that's terrible. But if you stated the other half of that statement, we're not allowed to be supportive of the government. Does that also sound bad? 
because the actual thing is we're not allowed to voice an opinion, good or bad, on the government. They just, people don't want to express how neutral this is and how much they're trying to avoid uh, interference with local politics. So instead of pointing out that it's a lack of interference, they pull one part of the interference out, isolate it, and act like that is happening in isolation which it is not. It is simply that you can't have an opinion. So that means that the people, so equally, you can't come on and bait people by being critical of the government and not being able to defend it. But you also can't come on and be super pro-government. And this is all the rules from the same government. The same government that says you can't criticize also says you can't promote. You just don't get to have an opinion because it's not your government. It's not your place to have an opinion. So just stay out of it, right? That's the rule. And so, so because that's the rule, we do have to manually follow that because it's not breaking a YouTube rule. And in theory, tons of my audience don't live here and they, in theory, are legally allowed to have an opinion. They're not ethically allowed to have an opinion, of course, but, but legally they can. And so they can pop on and tons of them do and without any repercussions are able to put in a bunch of fake news. But the only people who know who could either validate it or dispute it aren't allowed to do so, or it would be into a gray area and they don't want to step on toes and we don't want to have that in the, in the community. So that type of content, we have to just blanket ban. One, there's no reason for it to ever come up. It's not appropriate for this format, for this forum, for anything. So there's no re there's no legitimate reason for someone to be posting that stuff in the first place. So that's that's fine. So that's getting deleted has nothing to do with the channel in reality. Um, that it is known that by watching the channel, knowing where the channel is based, that that there are resources to know what it's like here, and that they can't disclose that stuff in an opinionated kind of way uh, and it can't dispute fake news. I mean, we can dispute fake news, but often the fake news is is a pit, like building a pit. There's, there's engineers ways, right? Propaganda is very good these days. They've learned how to do this over a long period of time. It's very good at making it that you get caught in a trap of opinion based on fake facts that you can't really dispute without it kind of coming off as opinion. And it's just an area you don't want to get. Why? You don't need to, right? We just delete it. Because you were told up front, you can't do it. So anyone who posts that stuff knows that they're posting against the rules, both the rules of the, the show and that they're either breaking the law if they have the credentials. This is, this is key. And this is kind of the rule that we use. If someone posts and makes the claim that they know anything about how things work, right? So the person in, in question claimed that they lived in a place inside the country and then claimed to know how some things work, which of course, if you actually live here, it's very obvious that it doesn't work that way. But it's very hard to dispute when, you know, people from the outside have no way to know other than watching the video and you see where I am. But all the other people who are posting on here, no one knows which of those people actually live here and which ones just claim to live here. Right? And that's key. So people come on and claim that they live here and then post things that if they lived here, they would know was, was illegal. So we have to delete that because the implication, they're implying that they're doing something illegal and that they're willing to take a risk because they want to do these things. So that's one of the problems. One of the other problems is that the people who are claiming often to be local and to have uh, a legal right, they say they, they don't, they're not able to voice their opinions. They can't say these things. Literally, they say it in the process of voicing their opinion, right? So it's a clear lie that they, they claim that they can't do something while doing the thing. It would be like looking at you in the face, holding a peanut butter jelly sandwich and going, I, you don't let me eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Nom, 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 nom. Obviously, we just let you eat it, right? During the act of eating it, you like... It's the most bold-faced lie, yet people don't call them out on it. Yet that's happening all the time. Read these posts. Anytime someone tries to provide a credential to something that they claim you can't do or that there's some problem, it turns out that their claim itself is the proof that it's false. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that the underlying concept is false, but their statements are. So we can't allow it. So that's the fourth category. But those are pretty rare. It's, it's rare that someone's going to get deleted. And when they are getting deleted, most of the time, it is the same person. I can tell, right? It, it's really easy to tell. This account got deleted. A bunch of other accounts got created. 
minutes after that, they all have the same name. They put like, like, come on, like we know, right? <laughs> and YouTube knows, like it's this is not hard. Um, so there's, there's, I don't know, maybe three or four people um, have been deleted, uh, uh, that their comments are getting deleted over the years, but they all knew ahead of time and they intentionally put it to try to force uh, the deletion because then they claim, oh, we're not letting them say anything. But the whole reason that they're being deleted is because they were posting to create a scenario where we couldn't post anything. They knew they were entering a territory where they were trying to use the law to restrict free speech from being able to have a, a commerce, uh, not a commerce, a, a, an open forum conversation um, so that they could act like people were in the conversation and silently agreeing or be forced to take action either that creates an illegal situation where they could then report people for breaking the rules or they could uh, uh, make false claims, right? They, they're trying to trigger a bad situation. So we just can't allow that. That's the rules. But so if you see your stuff being uh, disappearing and you don't have it, so if it's immediate and it never posts, that's YouTube. If there's a delay, that was YouTube, and I checked it and I released it. If uh, if it's up, and then you 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 will know, right? No one is accidentally getting their their stuff deleted. Uh, that's that's just not. No one has ever had that happen. Trust me. Um, so if you're coming to me and saying, Ah, oh, Scott, you got to release my things, or Scott, you got to stop deleting my things. Either there's no way I'm going to have a conversation with you because you were doing something illegal and it was a full out attack and there's no excuse for it. You're not going to come to me and talk to me if that's what you're doing, right? Like we all know that you're like, that's a different scenario. So if you're legitimately coming to me and saying, Scott, you're deleting my stuff. You're like, I am not. There is no, no one has ever said that to me where I had ever seen the messages. If it's something that, uh, you know, you just posted and you said, oh, can you check if it's in quarantine? I just posted this five minutes ago. Yes, that I can go check. And you could be like, Scott, can you speed things up a little bit? And I'll be like, come on, have some patience. But that's legit-ish. Um, but if uh, if it's anything else, like, I, no, I can't release it. I can't see it. You don't need to come to me and be like, can you change the rules? No, it's YouTube. I have no power here. Uh, that's how it works. So. Thanks for joining me today. Um, we're gonna be we're gonna be trying out this new schedule. Please feedback down there, and don't worry, your feedback on the schedule will not be deleted. Um, just don't start with that and then post something illegal in the act. You would not believe how often people do that. I love your channel. You do such a great job. I love you know eating street food in Nicaragua, and and then just casually some rant about crazy stuff and and all this made up fake news and and attacks on things, and you're like. And then just right back to normal stuff. It's like, like they're hoping we're not reading the, the comments. And easily, maybe that's what they're hoping. Anyway, so take a moment, like, and subscribe. Do all that stuff. Be, but be ready. 4 o'clock Central Time this afternoon. Be ready to jump on the show. Hit that like. Share it. Let it we're we're going to be talking about cryptocurrency, uh, both in the light of the new election results in El Salvador from two days ago. And just how that applies to Nicaragua. Because a bunch of false statements, completely, absolutely scam statements were made in our comments, but that's okay because they weren't illegal ones. They were just con ones. So we're just pointing out, we pointed out in the comments, this is false. Here's the thing. Prove this to me. I, you would not, they, and they would obviously not answer because it was all, it was a con, but I'm running through that and some other information, important things you know to protect yourself from cryptocurrency scams or misleading information or why you're finding stuff online that says one thing. And then when you try to use it, the information we're going to cover all that in this afternoon's episode. And I think it's interesting in the light of recent political events uh, in the North and what direction Nicaragua might take, but where they are now, all that kind of stuff. I think it's good information because a lot of people will have questions about this. And if you ever have someone who asks you about crypto in Nicaragua, this will definitely prep you uh, on what you need to know. Like and subscribe, buy a coffee. I will see all of you this afternoon.